Hello and welcome everybody, this is Roland Hartmann from GraphicInMotion.com and in this tutorial I will show you how to customize my AI Particle Construction Logo After Effects template. So let's get started. First of all, when you open up the template, make sure that you open up the Essential Graphics window. If it's not already open in your layout, then go to Windows and choose Essential Graphics right here. So if you open up the project for the first time, you will see that there is already something happening. There is already a placeholder logo in the project, and we want to exchange that with your own logo. So let's do that. Let's go to File and let's choose Import File. And let's select your logo and import it to After Effects. Now we move to the logo composition. It should be already open in your timeline. If it's not already open, you can access it right here and you can double click to open it up. Now let's drag in our logo into our logo composition. And you see that my logo is black, so I will just invert this quickly. I will just apply an invert effect to that and turn off my placeholder. Now let's check the setup and render composition with our time indicator right here in the end. And you see the logo is way too big, so we have to scale it down. Let's go to the logo composition and let's scale this down. So. I want it to be something like maybe 60% for now. Let's go to the setup and render and take another look. Now I think the size is pretty good. So in my case, the white logo doesn't really look good, so I will just add a gradient ramp to it. I guess that your logo already has some nice colors, but just for the sake of this tutorial, I will quickly colorize this a little bit with some nicer colors to make it a bit more interesting, something like that. That's fine. So let's put this in like so. Okay, just that it's a bit more pleasing for the eyes. Okay, so now my logo is in place. The next step is that we can enter our tagline. To enter the tagline, pretty simple. You go to the setup and render composition, choose the enter your tagline layer, double click and enter your maybe web address, www.graphicandmotion.com. That's my address and I spelled it right, great. Okay, so you can of course also change the character or the font and whatever you want. In my case, I'm pretty happy how this looks now. And now we have to change the look. So let's go into an area where we can see the build-up animation. So I will go to between two and three seconds. Then I can see all the particles and I can see the trails and I can just set up my reveal. To set up the reveal, move to the Essential Graphics tab and make sure that the setup and render composition is selected here. And there you see all the controls that are necessary to control the particle buildup. First of all, we have two values that are pretty important. This is the pursue value and the maximum speed value. So depending on the size of your logo, how many particles there are to build it up, you may have to change these values. So let me take a quick look here and I will just make a quick run preview. For the preview I will just skip one frame because then it is just a little bit faster and I will just create a quick run preview and I will see how my logo reveal is looking right now. Okay so now my run preview is finished. Let's take a look what we got. You see the particles are nicely building the logo and in the end they are spreading out a little bit as you can see here up here. So this means that they are a little bit too fast. Uh, in my case, I just can lower the maximum speed. So if I lower the maximum speed, let's say maybe to 1300, then the particles will not travel through the logo as fast as they do now, and the buildup will be a little bit slower. So in case if your logo is small and has not that many particles to be built, then you can lower the maximum speed. The pursue value means how fast are these particles that are building the logo pursuing the small bits that are then creating the logo. If you increase the pursue value, the particles will rush through your logo faster and create it faster. If it's too fast, then you can decrease this value. But in this case, I think that the maximum speed is all right. So let's take a quick look here. I will create another run preview and I will be back when this is finished. The RAM preview is finished and if we take a look at this now, you see that the particles in the end are not shooting off anymore. So they are nicely building our logo, coming together and then blend off. So this is exactly what you can achieve by changing these values. So let me repeat this rule. 
If your logo animation is finished too early and the particles shoot off in the end, then you can decrease the maximum speed or decrease the pursue. If your logo is not fully built and the particles already disappear, then it's good to increase the pursue value, um, something like 35, 45, don't go too high, and increase the maximum speed, something like 1500, 1700. Um, these are the two values that you can play with to get it really right. And yeah, this is something that you have to figure out on your own because every logo is different and requires a little bit different values. But this looks really good, so I'm very satisfied with the setup of this animation. There's one more option that I want to show you in case you want to stylize your logo a little bit different. You can change the particles in X and the particles on Y. And if I do this, let's say, for example, I don't want these small bits, I want it to be a little bit bigger. So I could set the particles on x to 100, the particles on y to 70, so I just divide these values by 2 and you will see immediately that now the logo will look a little bit different. You see now these particles are, let me go to a frame where we can see this a little bit better, you see now we have really not that many particles and now if I increase the size, let's double this also, so maybe to 12, and then I will replay this animation and you will see because there are way fewer particles now. This reveal will be way faster and then you again will have to change the pursue and the maximum speed. So just as an example, I don't find this result pleasing, uh, visually pleasing, but it's just an example to show you what you can do. So let me quickly create a new run preview and then we will change the settings one final time. So let's take a look what we have here. And you see now the reveal looks a little bit different and the particles are shooting around a little bit more in the end. Actually, it's not that bad as I expected it. But in this case, I will probably just reduce the maximum speed to about 1200, 1150 and then we would be good to go. So I will do that to create a new run preview and then I will show the result. So let's set it to 1150 for now and let's take a look what this does. Okay, so now you see they are moving through our logo a little bit slower and in the end they are not spreading out that far anymore. So this is how you can set up your logo. These particles are actually guided by an algorithm. So as I said, you have to put in the values that fit your logo. You have to maybe experiment a little bit with that. Let me just undo these changes because I think that it really doesn't look that good and I want to change these back. So I will just change it back to 1300. This was a good value. I want to change it back to 200 and to 140 and I will change this back to 5.5 or 5,5 which we had in our original example because I really like this look way more. Now of course we can change the colors to match our logo. So let's go to a frame where we can see the logo and for the left particles I will just take over a color from my logo. This color here for the right particles I will do the same. Then for the BG light color left, which is this area down here. I can maybe choose also a color from here and then just match it a little bit, make it maybe a little bit darker, something like that. That doesn't look too bad. Then we take the right color right here and maybe we also make it a little bit darker, something like that. That looks all right. Maybe I go back a little bit brighter. If you don't want these to show up, you can also turn them off. So you can just unhide all the elements in the setup and render composition. Just unhide all these with this button here. And then you can go to the BG elements here and you can turn them off if you don't want them in your scene at all. Actually, this also looks quite good. So maybe just for this example, let's turn them off. Now we can change the color of these waves here. So in this case, I also want to take over colors from my logo so that these really match the style here. This looks very nice. And now I can change the background color if I want to. Maybe we will also take over a color from our logo and then, of course, just darken this down quite a bit so that we have a nice gradient in the background and that it really matches our style here. So this doesn't look too bad. Now you see everything is pretty blue. And actually, if I take a look at this, I don't like this color over here. It's, I think, a bit too saturated. So let's turn down the saturation a little bit and let's make it a bit darker. Let me see what we get here. I think this will be a little bit better. 
yeah, I like this way more and I do the same here. So just turn down the saturation here a little bit because then these will glow a little bit more and look a little bit nicer. Yeah, just like that. That looks really nice. Okay, so now I like the animation and I really like the colors of the particles and of the background. And the last step before exporting our video would be to add some audio. And to add your audio, you go to your project, import your audio file, just go to File, Import, and then you go to the audio composition and drag it in. You can get the audio that I used for this intro in my preview video on Audio Jungle. You can find the link in the help PDF. To export, you have three different options. First of all, you can export it as Ultra HD full, uh, 4K resolution. And you could either render the setup and render composition directly, or you can also use this export composition right here. You can also find these exports here in the export folder. The other option, second option, is that you export it directly as full HD project, so it's a little bit smaller. And the third option is to export a vertical version mobile version and therefore you choose export mobile and you can see that this fits the vertical layouts of mobile phones or maybe an instagram story so this is it with this tutorial i hope that you like this little template that you create nice intro animations with it if you have any questions then please feel free to contact me either through my website which is www.grabbingmotion.com or you can also send me a message through my video hive profile. So thank you very much again for watching and I really hope to see you soon. Goodbye.